Well, this is a uh, guy Solis, Gentleman's Edge. Uh, today I got a few things I'm going to start uh, videos on. Uh, first, I got this hard Arkansas stone I've had for a little while, and the stone is very small. I tried to mess with my knives on it, but I think it's too too fine. It's really super smooth. So what I want to do is I want to I want to lap it and <clears throat> experiment with some razors. Uh, not today, though. I'm not going to experiment today with any razors. So I'm just going to lap it and just see kind of how flat it really is right now. Uh, I actually found this at a thrift store. Uh, I don't know why I go to thrift stores. I like to see what people people are doing, and I'm kind of nosy that way, I guess. But uh, so let's see what happens here. This is the 1200 grit uh, Atoma. Makes me wish I started with the 400 grit. I got so far, so this is going to take a little bit of work. Just very light pressure. I believe this is my first Arkansas stone. I have some other stones um, I got along the way. I got one from my grandfather's estate. Uh, I don't know if it's Arkansas though, but he used to hone his, his knives on it. So, yeah, look at that. It's going to take some work to get this one down. This is a pretty hard stone, too. So, just kind of getting a feel for it. <clears throat> Flattening the stone should always be the first process in honing a razor. Because if you don't have a flat stone, or you don't know, then you don't know what the quality of the edge is going to be like. I can't stress that enough. I've said that a million times in my other videos, but... Uh, so we're getting there, so I'm going to put this aside for now. Because I want to get to something else. Uh, it's a mail call. And uh, but first, a drink from my sponsor. <clears throat> so this here is a Morlay and Sons. Uh, and I'm partial to the, look at that, back in the day, $3.50. I have got to know when this razor was made. Uh, it's not easy to find out. I have a couple sites I go to, but here it is. <clears throat> it's got, uh, it's got some, uh, it's got some minor scale wear, or minor, uh, spine wear. No big deal. It's got a little bit of rust on it right here. It's got some uh, black pitting right here. Uh, and I got this for a really super cheap price. And uh, I'm partial to the Morlay because I had one. That I gave to a friend a couple years ago. And I don't know what he was doing. I test shaved it, and it shaved phenomenally. But he wasn't getting a good shave out of it. And I think he was stropping it wrong, but I'm not sure. So the thing with this razor is the scales are broken, as you can see. So I'm going to remove these scales. Uh, let's see. She's just, she's just flat one. 
Jeez, I need a tool to get my tool out or what? All right, there it is. It's out. So I'm just going to basically sand it. Maybe I can cut cut it off. See what it does. Oh man, I broke the tip of my cutters here somewhere. Look at that. It pulled the pin and broke the other side of the scale. So, uh, all right, let's just toss these. I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to keep that wedge or not. So I'll just put it over there. So, this is what we got. Uh, you know, it really, for its age, uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of rust to it. Um, I can tell you right now that, <clears throat> um, uh, where's one of my flattening deals? I'll just use this lid. It's, uh, it's pretty flat. Look at that. It doesn't rock about at all either way. So, so, uh, yeah. So, put this file back away. So here it is. This looks like a very easy restoration. Uh, I have in my arsenal all these different sandpapers, and this one right here is 12,000 grit. Uh, I really don't like to use sandpapers because sometimes the scratches are hard to get out, even with a 12,000 grit. So I'm going to do something. Uh, I think I'm going to use the mothers and just see what it's going to do. You see how quick it's going to come around. <clears throat> this is my old uh, little platform I used to use to scale up razors and everything. I haven't seen this in a while. So, Taking some off, huh? I don't like to use Dremel tools because the the uh, pads are so narrow that it, they just leave marks on your razor, and I don't dig that. Uh, but it's sometimes razors are really hard to get that really perfect. Uh, finish on them, mirror finish on them, and uh, it does. You see people, they'll go for hours, hour and a half, whatever, just, you know, going, doing all these different things, and they have a good product, but man, that's a lot of work, and sometimes a razor actually looks better with a little bit of uh, wear on it, because it's character, because Literally, we don't know where these razors come from or who had them, what kind of person he was or whatever. So, to just sit there and take away that history is something we should contemplate a little bit more. So, <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to get the... Sorry, I should have my rags cut earlier. I'm going to get my uh, my tang and see what that does. It's interesting because I got this razor for about 20 bucks. This is just a little experiment. Uh, I'll probably have to take us to the buffing wheel. Uh, this platform is handy because it brings the work up off the tabletop. I have a place for my elbow on the other side. So, so uh, the jimping is looking pretty good. Uh, 
Uh, it's got a little bit, it's worn a little bit, I don't know how that could be. That's kind of weird. I got to get up here and everything, but uh, so this is my up and coming project. Uh, it's looking pretty good actually for for what it is. Um, I don't know where people get straight razors from that I always uh, find. Uh, maybe estate sales or whatever, wherever, and, and some of these people just don't know what they really have. Uh, and so they just kind of see, oh, the scales are broken, I better let it go for 20 bucks or something and, and all that. And the guy like me comes along and says, hey, I'll take that. So, you can see that this razor has a little bit of promise. I hope this light's right. I can't tell from my angle, but uh, so it looks like already just off the mothers, and I think it's pretty good. Uh, so what we have here is we have a we have a razor that is got minimal spine wear, polished up great, and it's not warped. And all it needs is scales. So let me get my scale material down. Sorry about that. Uh, now I could do a number of things. Uh, I could, I should probably try to duplicate the original, which is black. This is all my buffalo horn, and I got to look at back at a photo I sent somebody because I know Sancho wanted a set of these, and I can't remember which ones they were, so I'll have to check it out. Uh, these are all ones I cut on my bandsaw, still a little bit rough, but uh, these this makes a really nice scale material for sure. So that's that, huh? Uh, Okay, other than that, I need to uh, tighten the pins on my double duck. Uh, I found a cool little deal here. This is used for body work actually. So this, this pin is just really super loose. So I'm just gonna tighten it down a little bit. Oh yeah, that's better. Let me a couple of wax on this side. There you go, that's good. All right, man, this is Guy Solis. Uh, hopefully this video turned out good. I don't want to reshoot it. Uh, it's kind of a drag. Sometimes I shoot videos and they don't come out very good. And, and uh, you know, it makes me wish I had a better setup somehow. But uh, anyway, y'all take care, man. Later. All right, man, so I've been going at this. This is a 400 grit Atoma. 
Uh, I've been going at it for a little while, and I'll tell you what. We got nothing hardly coming up. I think this thing is about as hard as my 20,000 grit. I'm getting there. Now I'll tell you what, this thing is so thin, if it works out as a honing stone for razors, and it's so thin, that anytime you got something thin like this, you want to put a backing on it, because it just makes it for a more sturdy stone that's not going to break or warp so easy. Put a 12,000 grit finish on it. Oh boy. Alright. Yes, indeed. You only hear the difference. That's all I'm going to do. That's how it's done. <laughs> 